I'm in the company of a young lady that you've seen in the frame at this time. She has a very peculiar and very interesting story to tell. And this morning she has mustered the courage, the bravery, after having thought about that for a very long time, to tell you guys her story. But not just tell you guys her story, but more importantly, listen to her story and find a way or ways that if you can offer some help to her. So I'll be asking a couple questions in just a bit. There are situations in life that some persons choose to hold on to. There are certain situations in life that some people choose to tell their story. And so this morning I want to thank this young lady for, as I said before, mustering that courage and that bravery to come and tell you guys a little snit bit of what she told me earlier. But just before I go there though, in terms of talking to her, let me just say that the words that this young lady will be mentioning these are her sentiments her words that's how she feels and yours truly will not be taking any responsibility no way she perform as it pertains to what she has to say this morning all right i just thought i'd put that out there as a disclaimer as it were so without much delay, let us just get right into it. Miss, a pleasant good morning to you. And how are you? What is your name? Let, let us start there. My name is Ashley Tracy Kim Anthony. I'm from Newton. And currently I'm living in Fobao. Okay, you're living in Fobao. You reached out to me Ashley and told me a very interesting story about you know your life so far but by the way how how young are you may I ask I am 35 years of age 35 uh, let us let us start from the beginning based on your memory how far do you want to go back in terms of just telling persons what is it that you want to tell them this morning where do you want to start I could start at any, like I could start at three years old. Mm -hmm. When I was three years, mm -hmm. as a toddler, as a child, my mom, her name is Elizabeth George from Newton. She left me with my uncle, Ambrose George from Newton. And it went on from there and then years gone by he brought me to newton mm -hmm. at his parents home mm -hmm. that's my grandparents and it moved along that she raised me most of my life okay she did what she could and to mention i worked it i worked for it all yeah it wasn't easy at all it wasn't easy it mm -hmm. was painful it was a nightmare it was scary it was torch torturous it was too much to bear so you go back all the way back three years you, you, your memory spans back right there yes i'll never forget that some of the things that you can recall just you want to touch on some of them yeah, when I was eight years old, my cousin abused me. He had sex with me, I'll never forget that. He's in America now, that family member. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to my family to let them know that happened to me in my life. Mm -hmm. And no one took accountability for that okay. up to this day. Okay. So I was like a victim up to this present day. Yeah. 
did they believe? Did they believe that story? Though? They will never take accountability of it. Okay. So there wasn't about belief or offering yeah. to disagree. They just never take accountability. Mm -hmm. And so, having been abused in that way at that tender age of eight, you said, mm -hmm. how how has that been for you? up till present I was like a black sheep up to this present time because I was at a, at, at the age I was a child mm -hmm. so I never knew what it was to enjoy my childhood okay all my life I was surviving mm -hmm. surviving surviving eating pain eating pain eating pain and just eating more pain Wow, that that must have been something else, huh? So when I, we moving along, yes, I know I went to pri I went to preschool. That is the um social center. I went to primary school. The um, sen um sen the sen Saint Martin's Primary School. Mm -hmm. I went to that, mm -hmm. and then I went to the vocational that is Saint Martin Secondary School. Okay, where I not drop off from school, but I stopped school at second form. Okay. So I never get no field of education wise. Mm -hmm. My mind was blown from a tender age, okay. so I could never absorb school. I couldn't stay in that atmosphere to learn. Okay. Because I had to carry through the pain, and I don't have anybody that I could talk to. Okay. Your mom and dad, what about them? My mom never had no close relationship with me. She left me and up to this present time no one never told me why was the reason my mother left. Okay. I never had a father figure in my life. You never had a father figure in your life. What about that situation? Can you just shed a little more like why you never had a father figure? Because I could not, at the time I was young. Mm -hmm. So my whole, my whole thing about that situation was just trying to get older so I could get clarity mm -hmm. and to reach out of there, like how I am today. I'm of age now, so I take responsibility of my life and talk to persons and network with certain situations so I can get information mm -hmm. so I can share it with you now yeah. so I can have the proper information to give out to the public yeah. so my when I got to know the guy that's on my birth certificate he literally wants me to come to England mm -hmm. you know and he wanted me to be his girlfriend so we could have an intimacy like to have sex with me and stuff like that and I decided I'm not going on. So wait, 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 wait. So let, let, let me see if I'm getting you correctly. Mm. The guy, the, the gel or the man you said that is on your birth certificate as your father, he's mm -hmm. where? He's in England currently, presently. Uh -huh. and, and, and when we kept, when we get in touch, when he starts yes. communicating with me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was the first thing he told me that he can bring me to England, but I have to be his own. Wow. Yeah, so it, it wasn't easy for me, love says. I'm not making no story. Mm -hmm. I'm not fabricating no story. It wasn't easy for me, love says. I have passed mostly all the parishes in Dominica and lived. Mm -hmm. Because you, there were no stable home situation I never had for any, you. I was just homeless, trying to do it on my own for all these years. And I never gave up up to this day. So from those tender years going through, you know, the abuse situation, what what kept you? What what kept you together as it were? I just keep fighting, standing up for myself. I get that bravery and I was just standing up to myself. Imagine you in a home of 12 siblings, both genders, 
and you like a bouncing ball. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that. This head, that's on my head there. Mm -hmm. Get a lot of blow in it from my siblings. They hit me a lot on my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hit me a lot on my head. At one point in time, they start saying that I'm, I am crazy because they wanted a reaction all these years and I never gave them that satisfaction up to this day. And I know that there's a fire in me God placed since I was, could even exist. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's still burning yeah. and I, the fire keep going on up to this day. Because the Holy Spirit have me alive for a reason, honestly speaking. And all that had to happen mm -hmm. because there were times I wanted to take my life but when I think back and I see other persons that younger than me mm -hmm. or older than me that are doing it for stupid reasons and when I cr when I do my own background check with their family their family is way better off than me yeah so it break me down mm -hmm. and ask myself a question I am here for the people. Yeah, I'm here for a reason. I'm here for persons that going through it and they cannot speak up for themselves. No one is no one is here to listen to them. No one wants to help them out. I will do it. I have the gods and I will do it. Wow. Do you have any children by the way? Yes, I have children. How many? And what are the ages? I have six children in all of us. Mm -hmm. I have a first daughter. She's placed by Wendy Coopel. Okay. That is in by Seven Eleven there. Okay. She's thirteen years old. Mm -hmm. I have a second <coughs> daughter. Her name is Ariel Scotland. She's placed by her grandmother. They live in now. Um, Bells. Um, only high the stretch there to Spani Falls. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then I have a son, his name is Noah Daniel. He is placed by Karen Pinada. That is Earl George sister. Okay. In the and then I have my disabled daughter, that is Ashel Ibrahim. Okay. She is with the father in Maho. And then I have the little boy. He's six year old, Ashan Ibrahim. He's with his father. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so. And all this placing of my children not being with me mm -hmm. is because of um, my family. I don't have a voice. I was young and I don't have anybody for me. No mother to stand for me, no father. So it was like, okay, we can, we can take her down. So they take me down enough times yeah everything in the system has tried to take me on wow. everything and I, I couldn't talk for myself at no point not in court not at a city not at a hearing nothing mm -hmm. it was just like sweep under the rug so i took that bravery now to, to say to speak it out Now, your children, mm -hmm. uh, none of them are with you as we speak. In terms of they not being with you, were there any court decisions involved? Or how did the children got to be living with these people? all these people that you mentioned? Well, to be honestly speaking, mm -hmm. Ambrose George is my uncle. And I don't know what decision he decided to ask Wendy to come okay and asked me for my daughter but at the time lofty it was rough okay mostly all the placing of my children i honestly i don't i don't it wasn't me mm -hmm. that done that mm -hmm. honestly it wasn't me okay. so i don't have no choice and with the first child i only get 50 dollars she gave me 50 dollars i'll never forget that for for giving her my daughter but then I don't want to mix matter, you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Because she has an interference with my uncle. Mm -hmm. And that was the only way she could have been someone in society. 
you know, for him to help her. Mm -hmm. So, to bring more controversy and more pain into my life, that's what they decide to do. Mm -hmm. So, recently now, before I went overseas, behind my back, they forged how much documents to have this child legal behind of my back. And then I don't know what happened, what transpired. I had to meet with them and then we go by David Bruning and David Bruning asked me if it's something I wanted to do. I am not an ungrateful person because at the time yes. I was living in my family home with all the siblings I told you yes, about there. Yes, yes. My family is people that have and they watch me suffer all this time with all the rich other hands on me. All this time. They never told my mother nothing good. It was always going back and forth, telling my mother who I doesn't listen, I doesn't follow instruction, I want to go out there and leave. Nothing, it was just nothing. You know when you hate a person, that's even fascinating. Mm -hmm. It was just so my life was just torturing. Tor tr it was just painful. I don't know how to think it. It was just pain, 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 pain. You mentioned a while ago, I took note, you said you went overseas. Tell us about that. I went overseas for the betterment for myself. When, I don't know. When I, was that? How long ago was that? That is in 2022. Okay. That was just a year ago because I came back last year, okay. March. Okay. So I met this guy, Marigot, because I was renting in Marigot. Mm -hmm. And then when I met him by the credit union, he was like, oh, you're so beautiful and all that. Like, I know all of that. Mm -hmm. So get to the point, you know? So his main objective was, I would like to help you because I see you going through. You also break that curse that is upon you. So I'm like, that's nice. I've never heard anybody come so close to me and even mm -hmm. what I never was expecting to hear and what I really wanted to hear for so long. And then he say, well, I live in Sotola, you know, for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. My status is very good. Mm -hmm. I could help you out. I have no kids, no wife, nothing. So why can't you just join? Mm -hmm. So I don't tell anybody about it. So I had the both children at the time. So I decide if I'm going to the next land, island, I would go with one because I don't know what I'm going to meet. Yes. And I never take the, the guy talk so serious because Seeing that I have trust issues with everybody, everything, I was literally like one foot in, one foot in. Yes, yes. So then I went with the father and negotiated with him to hold the disabled child. Whereas, I tell you, when I go up there, I will say, you know, money is and mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. us that in this struggle yes, together. Yes, yes, yes. He agreed to it. But then he gets so comfortable now where he was putting a strain on me when I was overseas literally calling me so very often in the man presence he wants he wants he wants he wants he so the guy was wondering like you know like he i don't know if he had all his information about me but when it, when it came down to what it is now he told me that oh people have saying that the guy pushing me to go out there you know to think with people oh, to okay, okay. so it was it was it was just terrible it was terrible, lovely. I got a good job in a hotel, a thousand for US every two weeks. And it was just, it was hard. It was, it was very hard. The man decided not paying school for my son. He's not his child. He's me bring up. He wasn't in, in, how to say it? He wasn't happy the fact that I brought my son. Yes. He wanted me to be up there, okay. and me and him would have moved along nicely, and the child was involved. And then the whole fact that I had a disabled child, then his family get involved, like I married their brother for his money, because he don't have children, so I can build a house, and those type of things. And honestly, I didn't marry the guy for what he had. I did it because of, I needed that breakthrough, I really needed that breakthrough, but for whatever reason, it never worked out. I never play with fire, and okay. I just came back home with the little that I had at the time. Wow. And this man came down to Dominica for carnival and bring only a birth certificate where majority of my stuff I left back to bring to Dominica for me, for my son that I left in his house. 
he never reach out to me. He never reach out to me. So imagine the whole year of last year, I went through hell and back in God's mouth. And I have never told anybody nothing. People assuming the hair I married and all of that and whatever. But I have never told anybody. I think it wasn't fit for me to tell anybody my business. I was just relying on God, praying, 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 praying. Because I never wanted to fight back with no evil or no revenge or yes. anything like that. I just wanted time to expose everything. And time is, time is exposing everything, as you can see. It is exposing everything. The mask is coming down. The veils is coming down. Those in high office, they're going down. So I just rely on God, time now. He's moving things in my life, he's shifting things, and he's bringing things. So now what I have to do now is just stay calm, stay still, till my breakthrough comes. You made a point there that I just want to go back to a bit. You said part of the, when the problem started with you and this guy in Tutula, mm -hmm. was the other gentleman in Dominica that you left one of your children it was calling you and Constant. asking you for stuff. Yeah, constantly. So to him, he's an next man and the child father is a man. So knowing that I have that both children with him, there's nothing else he's going to think of. He's going to think like I will use him to give the guy stuff in Dominica. That's what he had on his mind. Oh. And he feel like seeing that we're in a situation where nobody will help us and so you feel like we're having sex still when I go for vacation that you know mm. I'm going to let the guy know his business so yeah. he wasn't trusting me for nothing at all but he enlightened me a lot because he told me it's my family that doing me a lot of evil you know he brought me a lot of places and it awakened me when I went overseas I just I knew I knew the truth it was hurtful but I had to yeah I had to and he said he brought you a lot of places. He brought me to places. I wouldn't say I would call, use the terms of like people that's very spiritual that mm -hmm. can see certain things okay. that gifted them. Mm -hmm. So they just tell it to me. Okay. And I knew from the get the get go from three years to now I knew. So I was never wronged in my mind. I was never crazy, but they labeled me I crazy, I vulnerable, like yeah. So it go like wildfire in Dominica. So I was rejected in Dominica. Mm -hmm. Anywhere I go for a job, anywhere I go for anything, I was labeled crazy. Mm -hmm. So I I don't have peace in Dominica. I was traumatized. People making fun of me people doing me things I cannot stand up for myself because the law always ready always ready to brutalize me to do me something you know mm -hmm. now in all that in all that scenario I've been going through mm -hmm. have you quote unquote run a fall of the law meaning you broke the law and you know any... I've never broke the law I've never broke the law okay if I did, I cannot yeah. record, but okay. most time it's people that I bring in, you know, make reports of because of harassment mm -hmm. or maybe family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but knowing like I had incidents and yeah. you know, I was being gang stalked everywhere I go in Dominica by the law enforcement. I was being watched by a lot of people in high authority, all my moves. When I'm traveling, they harassing me. They trust me. Yeah. They want me to surrender, and I'm not surrendering. No, last year was something that I will never forget. Mm -hmm. Because when I came back to Dominica, the guy and the guy wasn't contacting me, my husband. So I was living in a very well-known place. Mm -hmm. in Portsmouth. Okay. I wouldn't disclose it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that, that's fine. And um, they take me in. I stayed there the whole day with them and stuff like that. And I don't know what happened. If through jealousy or whatever. They took my clothes. Well, I was with the guy. So, 
we used to send our clothes in the hotel to wash. Okay. And then they took my clothes, a black and white clothes, mm -hmm. the auntie, and she make one of the workers bury it. You know, mm -hmm. bury it in the property and stuff like that to sacrifice me. Wow. I never, honestly, going to reports or make reports and I don't get no justice for that up to this day. No justice for that, none at all. They wanted to sacrifice me. I don't know for what is the reason. Everybody just wants to sacrifice me for their greedy and selfish gains. What I am saying, quote unquote on the road, they are saying I'm not supposed to be here on earth. I not supposed I stay too long. I supposed to die already. That is what they are trying to you know I people bring into my thing, to my knowledge. Yeah. I supposed to be dead already. Because they give me a certain time to live. I'm not lying to you, lofty. I supposed to they meet they they put plenty money together to take me out. They what they saying they use drug man to try to kill me. They do everything in the book of ten of like if I lie, God will punish me and I tell you the only honest, honest truth. They use everything. My uncle is a part of it, my family is and them a part of it. They do everything in the book to take me down. And I never give up. Wow. I Actually never give up. I know it can be very rough. That's a very rough situation that you're talking about. I huh? never give up because they wanted me out before they knew you had stuck. That was the whole plan. That was the whole plan of, of the system. Now when they realize, they don't know, they keep saying I'm doing something, i doing evil, i doing this, i doing that. But honestly, pray I pray often. I literally buy a Bible just to pray. I don't trust nobody off there, I don't trust nobody, nobody. And most of the times, I encourage in others, right? And they don't know my story. I being around people having fun and they don't know my story. Yeah. They looking up to me like I'm a guaja. I have it all. Mm -hmm. They don't know my story. The allegations you made there, um, Ashley, mm -hmm. these are very strong allegations in that you said whoever buried your clothes and basically tried to or even work some sort of high science Negro man's union, that, that's a very strong allegation. Yes, I know that is a very strong allegation, but as I said, I didn't call any names, yeah. so it happened because they will commit me, right? And so so you because have evidence to yeah, back up she, what you're saying. I think I don't know what was happening to her. Something was happening, taking over her. Yes. And she couldn't hold it back again. Okay. And she said, I don't see nothing why they had to do you that. Wow. So it's like all where I go in Dominica, that's just the deal. To sacrifice me. That was just the deal. And it to them, that in high office. They cannot understand what it is I have because they did it already with other people. That is the trend in Dominica, you know. Sacrificing people to stay in power, to stay in office. I've been honest with you. I cannot say it no different property. I'd rather die for Jesus mm -hmm. than die for the world. Because nothing in the world cannot satisfy me. Lofty. I try everything in the book. Mm -hmm. I go out there looking for love, abuse. Mm -hmm. I go out there looking for work, people not paying me. Yes. People meeting me, they will go and tell the people about me, who I am, who I'm from, that there is a problem girl, that girl is a problem of family, them abandon, leave her for the world to, you know, ma so it was just, Lofty, it was, it just wasn't easy for me, Lofty, I, I don't know how to put it again. Yeah. It wasn't easy, Lofty. Do you do you do drugs, smoke, anything? I don't do no drugs. I never, I have never taken cocaine in my life. They accuse me of saying I take cocaine. They accuse me of AIDS. They accuse me of STDs. They just put. They just. You see, like when you have a problem with you within yourself and you want to pass it on somebody. That's how I was labeled in Dominica. Okay. Lawyers attack me. Lawyers attack me. Doctors attack me. 
it at a time they brought me to police take me what I can remember because my face was covered they brought me emzol after they took me um emzol they brought me psychiatric they forced to give me injection they forced me to take drug they they did everything wrong and i'm still here today i'm telling you that and i'm not going anywhere can you say your face was covered who covered the face Based i cannot on, remember who but it was covered okay because when they were passing like i was living wallows at the time yes i did not see any nothing oh. i can't tell you if we passed through newton or we go up to kinsale or we came down in this order and you're saying the police yeah, arrested the law. you and well when they came face. when they came is the police that were there yeah it's the law enforcement wow yeah and i never get any justice up to this day mm -hmm. never get any justice and then this house i stayed in i had a little girl with me some years back mm -hmm. and the owner i mean i wish he would be there to share some but i don't really want to put anybody involved in it yes he's like a family friend okay and he's from newtown and all he's here is because of his father passed so okay. you know, it, it went on to him mm -hmm. so it's like every time my back against the wall it's like when they want to see me but they can take my energy from so i come i always come back there like from back to rock bottom back, okay. yeah so there was a time i couldn't take it again and then i went on the road where you pack your vehicle and i put out all my stuff you know i put out all my stuff on the road and then people reach out to me those, those drug fellas make a big show and to get a fame and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know to get recognized because i don't believe like if you're doing something for somebody it's not everything you have to put on on the platform mm -hmm. There are certain things you can do privately. Yeah. The world do have to know everything. True. Some people looking for recognition. Mm -hmm. And I'm not out for that. Yeah. And they're not doing it with a good heart. So the year I did that, Kerry gave me six months in a house in Martin where the guy was a job man. They killed him in town. Okay. You know, I stayed there in that house. It was shameful. My family up to this day never come and asked me they knew everything my mm -hmm. uncle knew they never approached me nothing so just for the shame and thing you know mm -hmm. they just ambush they just push me aside so they can move along mm -hmm. i stayed there i get end up getting a guy that was interested mm -hmm. and then he tell me straight off you're not a problem to the world you're not a menace to the world you you can overcome that Mm -hmm. He's a drug man. You can overcome that. He never abused me up to this day. He, right now, currently, he's in stock farm. Faced him, okay. legal things he did. And, <coughs> and he helped me. He helped me. He helped me. People were telling him, don't interfere with that girl. That girl is a problem. Don't put yourself in that. That yeah. girl will make people take you down. And then, I don't know. It was so hard. I couldn't stay up there, honestly speaking. I had to just leave there. I left early in the morning, nobody didn't see my business, and I went to Top Farm by some people. When I went to Top Farm by these people, more battery. Like everywhere I go, it was just pain. Literally pain. Nobody wants to hear this side of the story. Nobody wants me to say anything. It's like I, I don't have nobody, so they just walked on me. But all these things that I've been encountering in my life, it made me strong. I just refuse to give up. Lofty, I refuse, I refuse, and I refuse to give up. Wow. Because of all that, I know it have something at the end for me. Mm -hmm. So I refuse to give up. Lofty, I refuse to give up. Actually, yesterday morning, mm -hmm. you called me, you reached out to me, and you were basically in tears during the conversation. Yeah, and it, it was very emotional. Yeah, yeah. And part of what you were telling me yesterday was that a situation of the court, the law, mm -hmm. um, put a bill on you, $600. Can you go back there? Can you explain that situation? Yes. Well, what I can say on that, right, Lofty? 
I decided I wasn't working anymore. So like every like Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. I would go to my home to help him with the children. Mm -hmm. Now the three hundred they're giving for the child, it's paying the child daycare. Okay. But she needs a lot more. Yes. A lot, lot more. No, we have to be balanced. I will do whatever it takes to make sure this children have things healthy. I feel nothing. Yeah. The father decided like, you beautiful. He used to manipulate me before, mm -hmm. whereas before I would have gone sex and do a lot of nastiness to bring money come for us, make oh. things happen. Okay. But I say no, I'm not doing that for anybody. I'm not gonna destroy myself. Mm -hmm. For anybody mm -hmm. so I withdraw from that mm -hmm. and I got awakened okay. in my life okay well I say no looking back I know it's not going to be easy in Dominica but I make up my mind of it yeah so in that awakening I got now I withdraw from my family totally because when they notice like uh, they see a change in me they see like all what they used to send after me to trigger me it, you know, I no longer reacting, I no longer getting vexed, I no longer walking rows of boo we I no longer agitated. Yeah. It was getting to them. So mm -hmm. judgment was that I literally was getting my just my Okay, they were being served then. Yes, yes. Yes. While they getting served, I was getting healed. So because I awakened myself and I start just leaning on God, listening to the Holy Spirit constantly and I just never look back. Mm -hmm. So from that, I decided I go in and help him the children for the week. He was harassing me every night. He loved me, he wants sex, he wants... You know when your whole life, you know, is that alone you're doing lofty? Yeah. After a while, you having this sex, you know, it's not like to say, like your body there, your mind all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's like I just did like a dead beat. Yeah, yeah. Because God know within myself, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I literally, I haven't healed. I haven't totally healed. So putting more of that on me yes it's rather i just give up mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then i don't have anybody to go and make a complaint and say that he's that's what he was doing to me yeah no knowing my situation mm -hmm. and vulnerable in the place is like everybody looking at me like they cannot understand how comes i get so calm and quiet yes. it like it it hurts in them in their hearts so when I see sure I go to the police station, 10 o'clock in the night, I made a report. The police and them, like, they, they never take me serious. They never write up to this day. They, they were laughing. Mm -hmm. When they reached there with me, they were like, oh, that's right. Like, like a big, everything's yeah, a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. And like, oh, you're married, and, but why would he want to, you know, have sex with you? And you, that's all the best thing. Yes. They, they never take nothing in consideration. Mm -hmm. I know I did the right thing instead of I get wrong. Knowing the children was uh, was asleep in the night, then the owner upstairs, and mm -hmm. he's going to put me in a difficult situation, and so I just do the right thing that I knew I was supposed to do. Go to the law, make them assist me to bring me where I can take a rest of night, and I came right there up to this day. And I stayed there. I never contacted him back. Many times I wanted to go in the school and what check my son, but I know. The heat on me so much, the heat, because a lot of people do have spiritualness in them, mm -hmm. so they cannot, certain things that I can see with my naked eyes, a lot of people cannot see. I know when it's danger, I not live in my home. I know when it, it clear, I can go out. Okay. So, I just decided I'm not going in this school because the devil is busy, lofty, busy, it's busy, it's looking for, it's, it's looking for soul, it's seeking for soul, looking for blood, it, it busy, lovely, busy, be, and in our land especially, busy, it busy, busy, busy. And I decide he not getting me. I make up my mind, so I just decide. You know what? I going to play hard on myself, and let me just let the system come for me. They know exactly who I am. Okay. So he decided he couldn't take it again, because what he's saying, if I just compromise to what he's telling me, do the little sex. I will be set free, mm -hmm. but I still not going to be set free because I will be a slave to sex, yeah. right? Physically, mentally, and mm -hmm. I still married, going through a legal process to get divorced with mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. How can I, in my right state of mind, mm -hmm. be doing those things? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, literally not looking nothing from the guy. Mm -hmm. I just want to set free. Things happen, you move on. Yeah. 
and that's it because god is fighting my battle for me i know he's fighting my battle for me yeah and it'll, it'll have one battle i've lost so far mm-hmm. i haven't lost not one battle in my life thanks for going back there um ashley so so the 600 dollars part of it how mm-hmm. how did that come across where it lost well i had now? well that uh, is all my documents and the children uh, so over the years i mean receipts get fed out depends on where you mm-hmm. store them and so where i bring the recent ones okay. than those of the past okay. and when i reach there i could feel the atmosphere i deal i honestly i not of this world so i doesn't think how they thinking so spiritually when i reach there the energy alone mm-hmm. could sell me today they're going to take it down and i felt that from the get-go from i came there okay. she came really aggressive i don't have a chance to show her my receipts i don't have a chance to show her the bank card like nothing i had said that day they don't they don't, they don't. like who is you and they're talking about the magistrate in the court i'm telling you gorio whatever that is her name yes, yes. she yeah. was hard on me she was no mercy no love for you to there. you have to pay it or else if you don't pay it we come in for you where you live in and we put in your stock farm yes that's what you said that's the threat they put on my life so i make up my mind i don't have a job now i'm going for my marriage problem i don't have anybody to speak to about it my one friend in ministry she has a family she cannot cut back on her family yes. and pay my bills yes. i mean that is mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. out of Yes, the notch. Yes, yes. She will if she can, but everybody has their own situations in mm-hmm. Dominica. Nobody has it mm-hmm. good in Dominica. Nobody at all. Every all of us is struggling practically mm-hmm. day to day to day. You as a man lofty, you standing up for the people, you know. And they're fighting you. So who am I to want to stand up for the young people? This fight they will fight me. So I don't have a choice. The guy, the owner I lead in with, this side, you know what? He wants to fix his place. He getting fired on because he going to them, nothing. Mm-hmm. To build a house on your pocket is not easy. Mm-hmm. No, he know, I know what is poverty. He know, I know what is, you know, to be in, I mean, nobody wants to be living like that in this type of century. But yes. you know what I tell myself? I don't really care what people say on me because a lot of times when I come on the bus to come here people make fun of me like 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 they they shocked see how that nice girl staying and always looking good and mm-hmm. so positive and they cannot understand that but mm-hmm. you know what God tell me to do it because God cho- I'm a chosen one God chose me to do that mission for him and I have to continue doing it for God don't think, don't think I'm actually good. Um, and folks, I apologize for the little noise now and then you are hearing in the background. We are in the four-bow area and it's very close to a highway, so you know that's expected vehicles going to and through. Uh, actually, I want to understand the six hundred dollars aspect of it. Did the, the, the court place that bill on you as it pertains to your contribution to your child or children with mm-hmm. their with the father yes um was that a one-time payment or how how did that payment well, come the, around as she, to the court ruling to be honestly speaking seeing that i never got the chance to really explain myself uh-huh. she just asked me when was the last time i brought something for them i told her what i brought okay. she asked the, the defender he said that okay and then while we speaking, mm. she's doing all her writing. That means she was making a decision. Because okay. from I came inside there, she was agitated. She wanted to hurry up to finish with the matter because she had some other matters to deal okay, with. Okay. So I could, as I said, I felt this spirit yeah. from I came in the whole uh-huh. atmosphere. There was a lot of police, military clothes, normal clothes, like you see and see, like, yeah, they were out for me. They, yeah. were, they were out for me. So, so bringing the documents and all of that was a waste of time. Can you just put up some of these documents that you have just to show that you know you, you are just you know just you can just put yeah. it here. Let me just pan the camera on it so at least that is some of the documents that you're speaking of, right? Well, yeah, that. Okay, okay. Receipts, oh, okay. affidavits, 
when I get the permission to go with the child overseas. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. cool, cool. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just yeah. wanted to, you know, mm -hmm. sort of verify what you're talking about. Uh, so that six hundred dollars. So she tell me every every week I have to pay seventy five dollars. Okay. And then she would like do the maths, do the maths. Like she was okay. really pushing me so they could get a reaction out of me. Okay. So that is the point I really wanted to extract yes. from you. So there's a seventy five dollars every every week. You say every month. Yes. So I do the maths. Oh. Okay. So it comes. To it, it came up to six hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. And then they are so even if, to... even if you clear up that six hundred dollars, you are responsible every month to pay seventy five dollars. That that's what it is, or no? I have to pay it till yeah, they do us apart. That's the seventy five dollars. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So be, because you did not pay or could because not pay, I am not then it added up to the six hundred. What what they because what they they trying to say is that right. If they try to place, they they will tell me if I would like to go back with the guy. I don't want. It's a nightmare to go back with him. Okay. So I decide to go the hard way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. God will give me the strength, and I will get through, and I will get the funds to pay it. Yeah. So I will have my peace. Yes. Because yes. going back in something that is toxic, that m multiple times I almost die from. Mm -hmm. If I go back and I die, he still have the problem to deal with. It's the reality some of us don't like to face. Because from birth to the child is 10 years now, 8 years I had this child all around the middle, going all around the place. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't working. Yeah. And I never brought him to court. I never had that maliciousness mm -hmm. towards him because he is struggling like me. Okay. He's a certified plumber, but he's a day to day is not every day. Yes. He has work. So I, I consider it on, like I always pushing myself behind and mm. making orders with You went in his consideration. All the time, so. And at the end of the day, here am I. Yeah. I was doing a business in Mao uh, on the side of the road when I told her about my food and all of that get infected. Selling drinks, um, bread, chicken. And then he again come and just tear it apart. You know, it was a lot for me. I never had help. It was a lot. My things stayed in there for, you know, how much hours, nobody not buying, but I never gave up. Mm -hmm. And after that, he still took my stuff. I never had a place. I always on the run mm -hmm. to store it. And he took my stuff and he gave it to somebody to do a business. Now I'm asking him for my stuff. It's like, oh, everything is a problem, is a law, is a lawyer, is a... Mm -hmm. So I say, you know what? I come in this earth with nothing, lofters. I'm going with nothing, but I know when my time come, by the Father above, mm -hmm. I will be at peace. I know exactly where I'm going if my high school studio tomorrow, lofting. Yeah. I will be at peace. Because as they quote in it, the priest or the pastor, you know, may your soul rest in peace. It's not everybody that us rest in peace. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, Ashley, uh, in terms of, okay, you mentioned, you mentioned areas that you try to help yourself by working. Yes. Um, any other areas you want to touch on in terms of, you know, you trying to well, presently, keep up yourself? Well, presently. Your work is concerned. Okay. Have you tried? Yes. Well, for the year, for January, I was working at um, Mali's Roots Rock Band Grill, as in Bello Tatan mm -hmm. and I was being traumatized again with the Lord. They used to just randomly come there. You know, his wife would be telling me, What is that all about? And I was watching on your phone, they took not pictures. I never used to be scared, I used to just be me, you mm -hmm. know, serving the public whenever somebody come to get something to eat or drink. But as I tell you, it's like I know that feeling. Yeah. So it's like I was always harassed. And then how I end up not even working there again is silliness. On silliness. Oh, they don't want me in your place as a problem person. And 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 and, and you, you, you you are categorically saying mm. that you have never dealt drugs in your life to say No, I've never been taken involved in no drugs or i've never taken cocaine i'm telling you the truth selling drugs i've neither. never sell drugs okay. 
I just want to be clear because if honestly, you're telling me I take, I police won't. harassing you like that, then they have to be harassing you for something. No, I've not. Police don't have to harass you just for drugs. There are other reasons okay. police harassing oh, you okay. for. Okay. Honestly, because I can. I mean, that is my time to talk, but mm. I don't really want to put nobody else on the platform. I understand. I can use a lot of other persons, police harassing, and they are not mm. into no drug things, you know, but that is for later, later dates. You know, I'm just saying. So it's like they labeled me, and it's like I'm just rejected all the way I go. I'm not lying to you, Lofty. All, all the way I go, I'm just being rejected, you know. And just, yeah. So in terms of the six hundred dollars now, uh, mm -hmm. what about that? Who would you mind ask for help? Because I realize that may be a. It is a burden for me because. To come up with me. Mm -hmm. Why saying it's a burden? I don't have the money at hand. Yeah. And, and that is a burden. I'm not you have thinking. I'm not thinking of going to. That is the last thing on my mind of doing anything out of the way to get that money. Okay. I have a lot of faith. Yeah. A lot. Trust me, a lot of it that I will get for this mm -hmm. because I have to eat, but I'm not even considering myself right now. Mm -hmm. So, if I have to make that sacrifice like I did all these years to be alive now, I will do it again. Three years to 35 years. Imagine the, the amount of pain I've been through. I've been through all the villages in Dominica, mm -hmm. all the villages. And no one never take advantage of me. Everybody just think straight from me and telling me as it is. You have a clean energy, you real, hold strong, you'll make it, you'll get through. Because that whole thing with that disabled child, right, was to literally to keep me down. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a disabled child, it's not easy, you know. It's not easy, loved us. Yeah. It's not an easy road. Because they have nothing in place for children like that. With all the monies, they are saying they're going overseas to help the youth and help this and progress that. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the child was at um, gym, it's in the home. And at one point in time, they removed the child through the guy because he keep telling him, I'm going overseas, living a, a lavish lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, gave us back the child i never had no intention of doing her no harm because of you know i want what i want and being selfish mm -hmm. i walk the walk with that child off there i'm not lying to you i walk the walk with that child there are times i had to leave the child inside and go out there to get things for us mm -hmm. because bringing her now and get having the stuff it's a lot because yes. nobody never used to help me, not lying to you. People passing me along their daily life. It's, to me, it's nobody's business. Mm -hmm. It's not them that send me and open my legs. You know? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's not their, I'm not their family. So True. They, they can't be bothered, Lofty. They just cannot be bothered. Mm -hmm. They are here. If I go off, then they are quick to call the law. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I go off, they are quick to call the law. But no, when I am trying to put myself in line, you know, to reach out to persons to, you know, even though it's a form of um, encouragement, that brings a big difference, you know. It's not mm -hmm. just giving somebody money and things and stuff like that. Nobody wasn't paying me on. Mm -hmm. And then, as I told you, when I was in Marigos, I met that same guy, and then I got a little relief. Because when I left, it was a lot for me over there. Yes, yes. The, what I experienced in Nomi, that's what I was experiencing over there. It wasn't easy. He gave me certain things, valuable things, and he wanted it back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for me. So when the law mm -hmm. took you and brought you up at psychiatric unit, have they, quote-unquote, labeled you or placed on you mm -hmm. the title of being crazy? That's from the to be honest, authority it, standpoint. Yeah, to mm -hmm. the authority standpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, how that transpired to even end up there, that was an early morning move. Okay. So when you do things like that, everybody's asleep. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I fear nobody. So I end up, my, my presence mm -hmm. alone is a lot. And everybody knows me. So from that time, they just, the dots start leaving the dots. And then it gets to my family ears. So out of the shame and embarrassment they hide in society, remember? 
they don't have they come one time on this in everybody came sympathizing crocodile waters like so mm -hmm. shocked like what are you doing there or like what did you do like that kind of yes, yes. acting up they mm -hmm. yeah they did that good they and then Dr. Thomas was there and was his name the other guy and they put me in the room to sit down everybody around the table and so many nice words and so many oh my god yeah and in the process you see in the process of all that no because um, the, why I talk about the needle the needle and the thing because when they came the night the police was so aggressive and yes you know like you know that kind of thing yes 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 and they checking like maybe i would have what what they was expecting me to do i never did up to this day i never outburst okay. i never get on i never i wasn't afraid i just go with the flow honestly because god is with me you understand so when they put me there and they put the, they close the gates they were expecting me to get on there like a crazy person and true, start true. saying losing my mind true. so they're finding like what's going like you know they don't have a reason they don't have a statement mm -hmm. to show because a lot of them doing a lot of things and they don't have no statement to show before the court and they're getting free and no justice for the other party so i just had it so locked down locked in that at this present they were like like whose moms will be like what moms they laughing you know? like what she just take what they just couldn't understand so they get so agitated with their self now they come among themselves decide they're going to do it to me so if they put whatever it is before 24 hours or before the night to the morning it will work up in me because i just do a lot of research those medication honestly is not for people that are going through any form of depression or anxiety mm -hmm. Those are medications that are high, right? And they doesn't break down in the body. So the more you consume it, is the more it going to yeah, enlarge totally. your brain, your lungs. Everything deals with the blood. If you don't have blood, mm -hmm. nothing can function. So I educate myself a lot, lofty, a lot. I educate myself. I don't want to laugh, but... And then, as I told you, the morning fall, and then my family came and... They were feeling embarrassed, put on that show like, you know, honor with this and uh, just a was a show, just a show. Somebody's asking on the live feed there. I think you said it, but they have missed it. Uh -huh. Are you like, you know, in, in the child support program, paying support to the child or children? Yes, well, they, they told me so and the court, so okay. I have to. Okay, you have to. Okay. And I'm willing to. Okay. I love them, but I don't have a home and I, I need a home. I know what it is to be fatherless, motherless. I know what it is. Nobody wants to interfere with me. They will against me. I think I have done it already with all the village I pass. Yes. Being in people's home and I'm a very clean person. I am I'm a multitasker. I love to cook. I love to see things. I have a standard. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. who do. I don't have that mindset because of I raised like that. I supposed to stay like that. Yes. So if somebody build a house for me, to me that would be my biggest happiness right now. Then persons give me the money to pay every month okay. because once if you, like how they would say like a quote if you don't have nothing right people cannot withdraw or if you have a start it will fall eventually a chair will come yes, a bed yes, will yes, come because yes, yes. I know what it is to sleep on floor lofty I know what it is to to poo poo in pit toilet that's why I poo poo in and I'm not feeling no way and I still beautiful I still have all my white teeth yes. I still yes. okay. Yes. So it doesn't make life challenges break mm -hmm. me down mm -hmm. because I must go for it to go through the next Experience. years of my life. Actually, I know by telling that very, very emotional story, I know a number of folks who would really want to help you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them you know, your contact information that they may, if they want to reach out to you? Well, my contact information is 275-1988. Let's repeat that again. 275-1988. All right, cool. So, folks, those of you out there, you're listening to Ashley's story, 275-1988 is her contact number. Please find it within your soul to reach out and help. At least the $600 would be applicable as we speak because she has to pay that money tomorrow to the system, to the court, and then thereafter, 
there's a $75 maintenance fee that you know she has to come up with every month uh, she's also in need of you know proper housing accommodation because where, where we are having this discussion um, she's living she's not waiting but it is not the, the most comfortable of places and you are hearing her story and I just hope that you know you find it within your heart to at least reach out give her a call persons who can help in one way shape or form please do so so that is just my 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 encouragement or my pleading to you guys out there all right so that 75 you said is every week or every month every week like 75 oh, every child. week okay yeah. okay so when you do the math you wow. Up to six. wow she so says she's not putting it lower she's not putting it higher she just they had their thing all system out already. yeah so they just dressed out to me wow. because i reached to a point i was going to put her and then you know the officer tell me they put me on the bench and they'll bring me up and yeah, yeah. so the elder your eldest child is, is old is that she's 13 years mm. she's in fee form at convent okay and then the youngest one is six six okay mm -hmm. they are doing good yeah. they're doing great they're very smart they they know the truth now when yeah. they were if, younger if they take anything from you they, they, they will be smart i can tell because i'm i i am I'm talking to a very smart person. I, I can hear it coming from you. Yeah, they're very they're doing very excellent in school and I don't think no phase that if they end up in no bad company people will say, Oh your mother they don't they don't make that check them. They don't make that check them. I feel good in my heart doing that. Honestly, I feel good. Well at least I feel I feel a relief and I feel good. Maybe the tears are in your heart, but I, I, I didn't yeah. see it today in your face. No, yesterday I couldn't do it today. Were, it's in my heart. It was really coming. Yeah, yesterday it was. I was going through some. And I feel a kind of darkness came inside there. And like, I, I was like, oh my God, are you really going to do mm -hmm. that? And mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. you know, I had to reach out to somebody. Yeah. Not anybody, but the right person. Yeah. And you are here today. Well, I'm here for the people, actually. I mean, situations like that, I always respond. I, I, I prioritize things like that. Because when, for example, you told me yesterday when you were talking lofty, sometimes I just feel like giving up the ghost, just killing myself. I said, wow. Yeah, because persons tell me to go to my uncle and all of that. I'm not going to my uncle. My uncle knows everything. He knows the truth. Because my uncle reached out to me. Look at what he does, right? He not every time but um when you feel like and he would say honestly speaking you're alive now you're still alive that's what he tell me it hurts me in my heart my uncle know the truth i mean there are a lot of things i would want to share to people but yeah that's yeah they keep saying things i'll leave it like that people will see the mask will fall off eventually yeah. So actually, I know there's much more that you know you can see, uh, but you but know, I, everything due to integrity, I will leave it like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So as we bring this conversation to a wrap, I know actually the help is gonna come. So you have to check your food, keep your food close after that interview. Yes. Um, but but any any final thing that you just want to put out there before we wrap? Well, only thing I want to say. Well, everybody knows me in tongue everywhere i speak for you guys i come out and did it for you guys yeah i did it for you guys i spoke for a lot of persons that will feel maybe next day you get a call mr um lofty you know i did it for for them i did it for them my children will feel proud when they they feel good like my mom let go up in now finally I feel good in my heart, honestly. Yeah. I couldn't have died and hold that in. Mm -hmm. I think people will respect me more. Mm -hmm. I think so. People will re respect me more. Yeah. Because I, as I told you, I just not giving up. I'm not bowing. So. I'm not doing it. Well, actually, again, I want to thank you very much for. First and foremost, having the confidence in yours truly and reaching out 
and and speaking to me, speaking to the world of XM. Because you know, one thing is on social media these days. Then that is has already gone viral. But but you know, you have encouraged the bravery because it, it takes something mm -hmm. to come to speak like that. And so I want to thank you for that. Yeah, and, the and, Holy and Spirit. You, you really seen as it was. Yeah, I really that, seen. That me. pressure feel, valve. That was yes, it. yes, absolutely. And just seeing you. But when I came there, I, I felt the tenseness, uh -huh. but I'm now leaving you on a much better note. Yeah, I so, feel good, I feel good. So, I'm not feeling guilty, I'm not feeling ashamed, I'm not feeling no kind of way. I just feel good. Yeah. Because that in itself, I already don't give praise to the most I already for doing that one step. True. So he's going to lead us. Well, they have a saying, in every dark um, thing, in the end yes, has joy, you know, yeah, there's yeah. joy in the morning. In every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. Yeah. So today's your day of silver linings. Yeah. Ashley, thank you very much. And just be encouraged. Yes. You have been strong. Always. Please continue to be strong. Yes, Please continue to be yeah. strong. All right? And yes. I know fully well that what you did today, as you said, mm -hmm. lots of persons may come out of their shell, as it were, having gained the strength from you. Because what yeah. you did today, I can tell you, is a is a real eye opener, a cracker. Yeah, I think that will shake down the place. I have to do it. I was feared, but I have to do it. I have to do it. I feel good. I don't believe in taking down people. I believe I'm talking on the matter of what I dealing with, what mm -hmm. I going through. True. If they have to fit in, I will fit in them. Yeah. And in all the pain that you going protect, through, I protect people too. Yes, I I, I sense that. I sense so, that a lot. Sense because that. when it go viral. It's going to hurt them, the, yeah. my family going to it because what they was expecting me to do is to crack down, you know, mm -hmm. and to end up in a place where I wouldn't understand myself. But like, as I tell you, I awaken, I, mm -hmm. I just, yeah, it's time, it's time, it's my time, so I have to do it. Finally. But they never wanted me to do it. Yeah, they never wanted me. They, they they feel like I don't have what it takes to do it. I will be afraid or cover my face or... Mm -hmm. No, I'm not covering my face. I'm not covering my face. Finally, you said that you are a very spiritual person. Very. You even have, a, you know, you know have your Bible. Bible at the back yeah, of I you. Yeah, I pray a lot. I pray, I pray, I pray, and I do it. Yeah. It goes everywhere with me. Everywhere I yeah. go, my Bible is with me. Yes, one hundred Bible so Yeah, it that. is. It's with me. Good. So Ashley, keep trusting. Yes, I keep do. hope alive. Yes. Know fully well that today may be your dark day, but they are much better and brighter days ahead. All right. Yes. Keep the faith, my friend. Thank you so much. And continue to be strong for yourself, for your children. Thank you. And so for much. those who truly empathize with your story today. Thank you so much. Folks, that is it. That is it.